Welcome to my tutorial on Screencastify. I just wanted to show you a few ways that I use Screencastify for me. Now you will need to visit screencastify.com and install the extension. There's a free version that will give you five minutes of recording time. It will have a watermark on there. During COVID-19 school closures, they are offering a short trial of the full version. So you can also enter the code for that in there, which I won't put in this video just because it's public. But you can put that in there and then you'll have access to unlimited recording times. The watermark will be gone. And it's really nice to have that. So that five minute limit of a video is really nice to try to stick to because about five minutes is good for download speeds, especially um, if they're downloading it or not watching it on YouTube and also for attention spans. Screencastify also is an editor, which is quite nice if you don't have access to another editor, but I wouldn't worry too much about editing your videos. So how do I use it? I'm gonna walk you through a couple activities and another website that I use in conjunction with Screencastify as well. When I choose recording, I can choose to record just my tab. So it won't have all of the extra tabs on the screen and I don't have to worry about switching between tabs or I can have it record my entire desktop. So if I want to switch between tabs or programs, then I can do that. I can have my webcam turned on so you can see me or off, either is fine. And I can have my tools turned on or I can have them turned off. My tools will give me a pause button so I can pause my recording as I'm going through it. An arrow button, that's just your mouse pointer so you can see me moving my mouse around on the screen. Pen tool, and I can change the colors if I want, which allows me to draw on the screen. When I change tabs, which in order to do that, I'll have to change out of my pen back to my mouse. When I change tabs, you'll notice that my pen is only on that one slide it doesn't transfer over to the next slide. And then eraser, I can erase, let me just switch back to here. With the eraser, I can erase just like I would use normal eraser there. Or if I click on the eraser, you'll see this square come up. And then when I do that, it will wipe off everything that's on the screen. So it's a nice quick reset. It only erases the eraser. So I like to use this particular format when I'm working with just showing how to run through the slideshow. I don't have to do a lot of writing. I have a touch screen, so I can just use my finger or a stylus to do that, but it's not quite as nice if I'm trying to write with my mouse. So you can see it's a little bit more choppy than if I were to use my finger. So you have to decide kind of what your best bang for your buck is there. You will also notice I have right now the Screencastify screen recorder is sharing your screen. I'm going to hide that when I'm working just because I don't want that messing up my screen for kids either. The other thing I'll do if I'm showing a slideshow like this one is I will, let me just switch back to my arrow, I will go view and turn off my speaker notes so that that uses up more of the screen. And I will also go view full screen. That leaves your tabs along the left hand side still there. I can't get rid of that. I'll also hit this dismiss button as well. But that'll just kind of bring everything really into focus there for me, regardless of whether I'm in full screen mode, just on a tab or desktop. And I can press my escape button to get back out of that. And so I don't forget, I will also put my speaker notes back in there. So I'm going to show you another way that I use Screencastify. So I have this document here that I usually use in front of students in order to walk them through this, maybe on a smart board or just project it onto a whiteboard. But if I want to show this using my computer, I could just use my drawing tools and write on here, but I don't have a text tool. So my writing might be a little bit messier. So what I'm going to do is convert this into a PDF first. So file, download as PDF document. So now I'm just going to save this in the folder. Now, if you already have a PDF created, you don't have to go through this process. You can just use that PDF. 
So I like to use explain everything and you just go to that by going to explain everything.com. You can use the try it now, but it will only let you use one whiteboard screen. So you won't be able to use it with a PDF that has more than one page in it, which is fine if you only have one page, but I actually created an account and they have a free trial on right now. There's a couple steps that you have to go through that, which I will link to in the video which I will link to in the video description. So I'm just going to sign in. And I just signed in with my Google. And now I'm just going to pick new project. It asked me, do I want to start with a blank whiteboard screen? Which is great if I just want to write stuff on the screen and record that. A template, which is one of the templates they've created. Or file. This is where I can upload a PDF, an MP4, or a JPEG. So I'll just click PDF, and then I will grab my distributive property PDF that I've created. I'll give it a couple seconds to get itself set up. And then I'm just going to click Insert 8 Pages. Again, I just have to wait. I'm just going to mute the microphone and join because I don't want anything coming out of my speakers. I can just ignore everything that's on the right hand side unless I'm going to invite other people. Now, Explain Everything actually lets multiple people log into it at the same time. So I could actually use this with students if I wanted to. I could log in myself and then I could give that link to other people and then they can also get in there and then they can write on the screen There's as well. There's a record well. button at the bottom and that lets you record the screen. So you could also just use explain everything to record your screen. The thing about that though is it doesn't have an editor so I like to use it with Screencastify. So now that I've got this I've got my first slide for my PDF. And then I can just move to the bottom of the screen and I can click to the right and it will bring me to the next slide. And now I can use my pen tool and I can draw on here. And it might be a little bit slow. So I've got that as an option. I can click my text tool and I can type in here as well. When I click the little check mark button, it will lose the box that goes around that. There's also a variety of different text options. So I can play with those. I can add shapes. I can use my eraser in here as well. And it will only erase the pencil that I've been drawing with. So that's nice. I can use the laser pointer if I want to bring students attention to something. Uh, there are highlighters, lots of different things that I can play with in here as well. So I find that if I'm trying to record something, this is also a nice tool that I can use with that. And there's lots of different whiteboard options out there. It really doesn't matter which one you use. It's just kind of nice to find one that has an ability to import a PDF, write on it, erase on it without affecting the PDF. And the extra cool thing about this is that you can invite other people into it as well. And you will see their names on the right hand side. So that's about it for Screencastify. I will set up another video in which we will explore Screencastify Submit, which is in beta form right now, but is a great tool that students can use. Hopefully you found this video helpful and we'll see you in a future one.